Welcome to our line. In the previous video, we only changed the first column where we add some false, po some false negatives. But in this example, in this video, we're also going to have some false positives to see how that changes the sensitivity of the test, the specificity of the test, the, the positive predictive value, and the negative predictive value of the testing. So again, we had 100 subjects, 20 had the disease, 80 were healthy. So what changes? It turns out that sensitivity is exactly the same in this example as it was in the previous example because the sensitivity only depends on the ratio of the number of people that actually test positive when they actually have the disease. So since that ratio didn't change, 19 out of 20, 18 out of 20, 17 out of 20 and so forth, the sensitivity of the test is the same here as it was in the last uh, example where we did not have any false positives but that does not have an effect on the sensitivity it only depends on the ratio of the number of people that test positive that truly have the disease divided by the total number of people that have the disease of course when your sensitivity drops down to 75 percent that means that means you're missing 25 percent that have the disease they're flagged as negative when they're actually positive the specificity in this case does change because now we also have false positives and the specificity of course depends upon the number of false positives. So the greater the number of false positives, the smaller the number that are truly flagged as being negative. So notice that the, the, the numerator becomes smaller and smaller as fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people test truly negative when they are negative, when they are healthy. They expect to see a negative test and notice that number continues to drop because the specificity of the test is simply the ratio of the number of people that truly test negative divided by the total number of people that are negative. And of course, in our sample, that remains at 80. Notice at the end, the specificity drops down to 68.8% when only 55 out of 80 people that are healthy truly test negative, which means that if you test negative, you have a 68.8% probability that you are indeed negative. So that's not a good number. The next one here is the positive predictive value. That means the, the probability that you are indeed positive if you test positive. You can see here that 78.2%, 64, 53, 44, 37, it drops pretty quickly. Why is that? Well, that means that if you test positive, you don't necessarily are, you're not necessarily positive. And the reason is the number of false positives is increasing quite quickly. Notice that if there's more false positives than true positives, that number here drops to below 50%. That's exactly what it means. If your test has a lot of false positives, then the positive predicted value drops quite, quite quickly. And that's exactly what we see here because essentially the predictive value, the positive predictive value is the ratio of the true positives divided by the total positives. And of course, the total positives grows quite quickly if there's a lot of false positives. And eventually, if the false positives are greater, a greater number than the, net, than the true positives, then of course, your positive predictive value drops quite a bit. Finally, the negative predicted value. What that means is the probability that you're truly negative if you test negative. Well, that number is hopefully close to one. And you can see here, initially, it is close to one because there's very few false negatives. But as the number of false negatives grows, that is because the sensitivity of the test drops, then, of course, the ratio of the people that do test negative divided by the total number of negatives, that ratio becomes smaller, which means, in the end, that if you test negative, what is the probability that you're actually negative? Well, that's what the NPV here means. That says that if you test negative, there's a 91.7% of chance that you are truly negative, and that's due to the higher and higher number of false negatives. So there you can see that as the test results change, how these parameters change as well. And hopefully that gives us a better feel of what they mean.